Hello? Dear Constance, you can call me Alice. I'm a huge fan. I'm in a poly relationship where me and my partner currently only date women. I am bisexual, but I've noticed myself wanting other men as well. But I don't know how to bring this up with my partner. Or if he'll just not want to be with me anymore. I need some advice on how to bring this topic up without offending him and his masculinity. My perception of like people in poly relationships is like, y'all are open-minded. Y'all go with the flow. Y'all, you know, free spirits. I feel like this should be something that you feel comfortable enough to talk to them about. Especially considering y'all are poly, so y'all have already discussed inviting people in. I feel like that's the hard part. Once y'all agree that you want people in the mix, all you gotta do is set the confines of what those people look like. And unfortunately, you cannot control how he receives the news. You can only do your part in making sure that he is aware of what it is that you are going to do so that when it's done, you don't have to feel like sneaky about it. It's like, it's like a, you know, I told you so type of thing. Not an I told you so type of thing where it's like, I'm doing this, I don't care what you say. Obviously you're gonna be respectful of his opinion, but I think it's a great opportunity to just have that conversation to expand the, um, the confines and boundaries of your relationship. Yeah, what'd you say? How to bring this topic up without offending him and his masculinity. As far as offending his masculinity, I don't know how, you know, I don't date men. So like, have I ever, offended my brother's masculinity or any men in my life masculinity i don't know nor do i really care that's unfortunate let's ask b behind the camera b what is your pov like how can she go about bringing this topic up to her man without offending his masculinity um she wants to sleep with other dudes right right no it's it's polly so she wants to bring other, other people in like a man in okay well so i mean the way I look at Polly is is supposed to be equal, right? So it's just like, um, like she should have her fun too. And I don't think if you if you're in a poly relationship, you should be so secure in your masculinity or femininity that whether or not your partner decides to bring s whoever on, it shouldn't affect anything. So if it does, that's a sign to me that he's really just in a poly relationship with you so that he can fuck around on other bitches. Purr, B, you did hit the you did hit the the nail on the head. That's what I was saying when I was like, I feel like they're free spirits. Like I feel like as a poly, like somebody in a poly relationship, you already know that this is not as a free for all, but y'all are ready to have some fun. Right. So just as you just as B said, like, you deserve your fun too. It can't only be y'all messing around with girls to satisfy him. That's cool if you're cool with it. But I'm not gonna say he should be cool with you inviting people in. But I do think that this should be a relatively easy conversation to have, considering you guys have already decided, like, y'all are not going the conventional relationship route, right? And as far, and again, I, I really like that you said, like, if he's secure, then he shouldn't feel offended because he already knows what he signed up for. And at the end of the day, like I said, you can't control how somebody perceives it. If he's offended, that's on him. All you can do is communicate what you can communicate and do what you got to do. If he isn't effing with it, then that's up to you to decide, like, am I going to compromise on what I want or am I going to stay here? You weigh those options out. I don't think you need to compromise because y'all ain't married. This ain't the end all be all. Okay? Go get with your other man and enjoy yourself. That's why I don't really get poly relationships because not to shit on you, girl. Do what you got to do and do it well. I just feel like uh, it's too much going on. Like, once I say, all right, now you can bring other girls in. Now I got to worry about you waking up one day saying, you know what? I want to bring other guys in. Or you know what? I want to bring a... Should I say it? Non-binary person in. Ain't nothing wrong right. with it. Be who you are. But I'm just saying, okay, it's, it's, what are the boundaries? I got to have you on the show, Alice, because I was trying to find somebody, Polly, a while ago, and I ended up dealing with, like, I ended up having somebody come on that was really in an open relationship. I would love to have you on the show. You and your man. If y'all able to talk this out, give me a call. 240-587-3186. Y'all know what to do. If you need advice, if you want to kiki with me, if you want to talk to me, if you want to give me words of encouragement, give me a call. All right. And that concludes today's segment of Dear Constance. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Constantine and Show. I am your host, Constance. As y'all can see, we are still here in the studio. I love that for me. I like that for me. Shout out to God, if y'all watched the show way back when, when it was Constance the Podcast, y'all know one of the things that I wanted to do was showcase my outfit. And so now y'all can see the full fit. Let's go ahead and get into it real quick. It's, I guess, I mean, I ain't gonna stand up. Y'all just gonna have to follow me on Instagram at Black Mocha, B -L -A -C -K -M -Zero -C -H -A. I'm sure there'll be a picture or something there. But I have this netted 
these are actually stockings that I turned into a top. We have this brown vest that I actually thrifted. And y'all gonna learn later on in the show how much I love a good thrift find. Um, what is this? This is actually a two piece set from Shein. People be talking about Shein, they be shitting on Shein, but baby, I love me a good Shein. People think you need to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to be fly. That is a lie from the pits of hell. If you don't know how to dress, that's your problem, but baby, you should be able to put together an outfit for little or less. You don't need designer. Anyways, at the end of the day, the outfit is cute. The outfit is chic. Are we surprised? No. I think y'all, this is the perfect time to hop into a segment of mine that I love to call, Bitch, Did You See That Tweet? On today's segment of Bitch, Did You See That Tweet? I'm actually using a thread because they don't lock me out of Twitter. But it's okay. Today's thread was actually threaded by Bobby Likes. And it reads, you want to make God laugh? Tell him your life plans, dot, dot, dot. I guess I could say my whole life, I thought I had a plan. Like, honestly, I thought at this point in my life, I would have been done, set, free, financially free, doing big things. I ain't trying to downplay nothing that I'm doing, but this isn't where I thought I would be. And a year ago, I would have been so upset about that. But now I'm starting to understand that like, God is definitely fully in control. And in addition to that, just like the tweet said, it's like, I don't know if God is laughing when I'm making my own plans, but I do know that my plans mean nothing to what God has in store for me. For example, I was supposed to have a guest today, right? And you know, unfortunately I wasn't able to connect with the guest and that's okay. If this would have happened a year ago and I wasn't able to connect with the guest, I would have been livid. I would have been upset. I would have been frustrated. I would have even got to talking to God any type of which way, like what's going on. But I'm at a place in my life where I understand that God's no or things not happening is really God intervening in a situation and redirecting me to align with whatever it is he has for me. And I found peace and solace in the idea that things not happening the way I want them to happen is really just God redirecting me. And so I guess this is really just a, a reminder or an opportunity for anyone that's listening to sit back and just reflect on those times where you wanted something to go a certain way it didn't go that way and you were just frustrated. You were upset with God. You were, you, were, you were so confused as to how you could have planned for everything to go well up until this very moment and it didn't go well. And instead of being upset about it, literally just say, thank God. Like lately, I haven't, I'm not gonna say I'd be like, thank God when things don't go my way, but I now open my mouth to say, God, like, please allow me to see your glory in this. Please allow me to see why I'm in this situation. Like you, you allowed, X, Y, and Z to not happen, or you made sure X, Y, and Z didn't happen, you know, help me to be okay with that. Help me to be understanding of that. Help me to receive that so I don't miss out on the opportunity to see your glory and to see your light in my life the way you want me to see it. Um, you know, fully surrendering to God is, it's a challenge, but I think the more that I do it, the more peaceful life is because I'm just not stressed out that things aren't going my way because I also understand that my way means nothing to God. God's way is superior and it's everything that I want to follow in my life. So that concludes today's segment of Bitch, you see that tweet, all right? So we're gonna get to some talking topics. I have three topics. We're gonna be talking about creating the life you want and not having a victim mindset. I said we have three, looks like we, already, we only have two because I already addressed one of them. So those are going to be today's topics. But before we get into them, let's go ahead and hit a brief intermission. Run the brief intermission. You can't dress if you can't put together an outfit for under $30 in 15 minutes or less. Welcome to Thrift Shit. I'm going to see if I can put together an outfit for $30 or less in 15 minutes. But here's the kicker. For every minute that I do not complete the outfit, I will lose a dollar. I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. Let's get started. Since we're shopping for date night, I feel like a dress. A dress is gonna eat, 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 eat. Okay, this is sexy. So now what do I need? This is how much? This is $11. I think I have a lot of free range with like shoes and accessories. Shoes, eight. I did this faster than I thought. Seven. Those are six and a half. I wonder if there's sevens down here. I don't see any sevens that are like screaming my name. Excuse me. These shoes are expensive. 
They're like 20 bucks. And this is $10, $11 already. 12. How much time do I have? 13 minutes. All right, let's try to see. Should I just stop here? What else are you trying to find? I need like a purse. I'm going on a date. I don't know if this is the best outfit though. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, this is an outfit. But is it the best? Maybe a hat or a scarf. I can do like a cute belt. A corset. How much is the freaking corset? $3, okay. Uh, is this the best outfit? I don't know if this is hat. I think I'm going to stop with this and go with just these. No. Okay. We're gonna go into the fitting room and see what I got. I feel like I want to add more to it. Like, I don't feel like this is my best outfit, but I feel like it's a date night outfit. So let's see how much this totals out to. The dress was like $11, the shoes were 12. So this outfit is suitable. I have $26 to spend. This is a $22 outfit. And I still have time to spare. And that concludes today's segment of Thrift Shit. If you think you have what it takes to beat me, leave a comment down below and you might get chosen to be on the next one. And we are back from the brief intermission. How did you guys like that thrift shit segment? I loved it, I enjoyed it. Y'all know I love clothes, so that's definitely something that I'm looking forward to doing more. All right, you guys, now let's get into the next segment, the topics for today. I think we all have the power to create the life that we want. I sit and I think back to like a younger version of me. It doesn't even have to be that young. Literally last year, I would say that I can't do X, Y, and Z because I don't have the funds. Or I can't do X, Y, and Z because I don't have anyone to do it with. Or I can't do X, Y, and Z because I don't know. It's so easy to make up excuses, right? It's so easy to tell yourself that you can't do this and that and you're not able to do this. And whatever the excuse is, that's what the fuck it is. It's an excuse. It's a sad excuse because God has literally blessed all of us with free will, okay? If you're following God, obeying his commandments and listening to his instruction for your life, why would you not go to a conference because your friends can't go to a conference? Why would you not take yourself out to a different state, a different city, a different country because you ain't never been before? I don't know what type of excuses people be coming up with, but I really am starting to realize that you can create the life that you want. Do you guys see all of this? <laughs> like, glory be to God, this is all God's doing and not my doing, but all I had to do was make steps toward creating a life that is seemingly fit for whatever I've envisioned for myself. Yes, this isn't what I thought um, the next chapter of my life was going to look like, but here I am in a studio. I got to enjoy my Saturday doing something that I love. And I'm not saying this to gloat or brag, but I'm really saying that you can honestly create the life that you want. I never would have thought that this was possible and God has made it possible. And so I think that this is really an uh, invitation for everyone to sit and reflect on the things that you want in your life. Reflect on how you want your life to look, right? And I'm not saying you gotta plan it step by step, but try to do things. Like if you wanna do something, try. The worst thing that happens is God says no, right? And so now you have to pivot and redirect yourself. And that's your opportunity to say, God, allow me to see the glory. Allow me to, to see your glory in this. Allow me to, to take the next steps towards doing whatever aligns with you, but try things. Before we came here, me and Benicia, we went out to lunch and we were just sitting and talking about how we are literally taking steps to making life enjoyable. You don't need to be this rich billionaire. You don't need to, to have all of these businesses. Enjoy the life that you have now, okay? Do what feeds your soul as long as it's in accordance with God. And I guarantee you, if it's not, God will put a halt in it. My favorite uh, story in the Bible, I'm not going to say it's my favorite story in the Bible, but it's definitely something that I like to revisit to kind of get me in check or just to remind me that like God is definitely always in control. I always think of 
Balaam and the talking donkey. I've made reference to this so many times on this show. It's Balaam was set out to do something, to go on a journey. God told him not to go. He was like, man, I'm going to go anyways. The donkey literally could not go past the freaking gate because God sent an angel to put a halt. So God will redirect you and that's okay. God will stop you from doing things. But don't let that be the reason that you sit at home and you cry and you mope and you pout. All right. God is waiting for us to act on things. We talk about we talk about faith. Like I've been talking about faith and then I look at how I handled things in the past and it's like your faith won't dare all the way. And I think that that's okay. There's levels to maturing in faith, right? But ultimately, I mean, really, this ain't even a discussion about faith. It's about making sure that you enjoy life and do what you want to do in this life. You can do whatever you want to do, literally. Just make sure you are not chasing other people's dreams. Make sure you're not doing things for other people. And make sure you connect with God on that. But go out and have fun. Take yourself to a... Uh, I said me and Benicia were talking. Did I touch on what we were talking about? I don't know. She was just telling me she had traveled and did a bunch of things that she got to do on her own. And she also got to find herself. I think that's the beauty, too, in like really creating the life that you want. When you start to explore the things that you like with or without other people, you get the opportunity to learn yourself, right? You learn how you move in these flight or fright situations. When you're all alone and you're stranded at night and you figure out how you can maneuver in a situation to get home, like those are the pivotal, pivotal moments in our growth and understanding of ourselves, right? Um, Bro, just create the life you want. Stop stop crying about it. Like, don't nobody want to get on Instagram and see you crying about this didn't go left. I mean, this didn't go right. It went left. Don't nobody care. It went left. And if you find yourself on Instagram, really need to stop all that and get you a journal. Get you a journal. Cry about it. Write about it. You already know. Click the link in the bio so that you're notified when this drops. But get you a journal and vent, vent it all out. I fucking hate when I see people on the internet crying about life. Don't you hate that, V? Yes. It's so sad. Like, it's so sad. I wanted you to say more than yes, but it's cool. It's sad. No, it's really sad. And it's just like, the internet does not need to be the place for you to harbor all of your feelings and emotions. Like, get you a journal, connect with God, figure out a better outlet than the internet because don't nobody care about what you're doing. On it. Don't nobody care that you that shit, stuff didn't work out for you. You're wasting your time and energy typing on the internet. And go out and do stuff and have fun. Boom. All right. So as we talk about... Um, creating I think we already touched on it I was gonna talk about like not having a victim mindset right and like not saying that oh I was I was born into a poor family so I can't do x y and z girl if you don't shut up we all was born into some type of poverty into some type of struggle stop beating yourself up okay because I think the 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 because in that dilemma or in that case you know like, everybody's always like, well, why Why do bad things happen or whatever? I mean, that's the thing. I really can't tell anybody why bad things happen. And I think it's beyond why bad things happen. I think you just need to go for the good because there will be bad, right? There'll be bad. There'll be good. It's life. Like, I feel like at this point in our life, 20-something years old, you, you know that life can suck. And it'll suck. I don't have a reason for why it sucks. I can't tell you why God decided to do that. I think that's really the story of Job. Like, Job and his friends are sitting trying to figure out why things are going bad for Job. And at the end of it all, God is like, you don't even know why I did what I did. So sitting there and trying to think about the why, I think is going to pull you further and further away from getting to the good because you've allowed yourself to fall in this rabbit hole. Bad things are bound to happen. And it is super unfortunate, but don't let that be the thing to stop you from getting to your destiny and living out what God has for you. There's so much to life. And I don't even want to, I was going to say like, you can look at it as a test or whatever. No, I don't even want to tell you how to look at it. Just don't even think about it. Don't even look at it. When you're in it, you're in it. There's nothing you can do. But once you're out of it, get out of it and go do something else. Like once you have the opportunity to literally do something else to pull you out of it, do something else. Like cry for two minutes and move on. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's, that's easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. I'd be crying, child. I will cry for days. But after you cry, get over it and get stuff done. Like I will never let my, I would never let the bad things in my life stop me from getting closer to what I'm supposed to do. Some people say, I mean, I ain't saying it's true. I've heard some people say, B, I'm sure you've heard some people say, some people say like when um, you're faced with trials and tribulations, I think you had touched on it, like you're getting closer to your blessing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to flip your perspective to think of it like that, then I think you should because that at the very least communicates to you something is coming. I think when we are in these bad situations, it seems like that's it, right? That's the end of the times. This is like what more can happen is what we're thinking. How much more worse can it be? I don't even think we need to focus on that because it can be worse. 
but it can also be good. But you got to find the good, which is why I had told y'all, like, whenever I'm in a situation and things aren't going my way, instead of complaining, I started going to God and saying, help me to find your glory in this. Like, when you can identify God in a situation, it's so hard, I think. It's a lot harder to be upset because you realize that the Alpha and the Omega is in control. Not only is he in control, but he is present. And his presence alone is the thing that brings me peace. So I can only imagine how much more peace it could bring somebody else. So if you ever find yourself in a tough situation, cry unto God and ask him, how, like, help me to see your glory. Help me to understand why I'm in this situation. Help me to be strong enough to get me out of the situation because God would never put you into something that he knows that you can't do. God is, you know, your life is, is literally, I, f I believe that our life is, was created in such a way and devised in such a meticulous way that every single experience, I even believe that every body that you meet contributes to who God wants you to be. So I, I think it's an opportunity. This, this, this is really an invitation to start asking God to help you see the glory in situations rather than crying about it or not going after the things you want. Anything is achievable and attainable. I don't know how many times I got to reiterate it. Um, I think this show is living proof of that. And I thank God for that. And I hope it's touching somebody, but you don't have to you don't have to allow the negative in your life to cripple you and stop you from attaining what God has destined for you. People will believe in this concept of God, right? People will believe that there is a God that created us, that there is a God that can give you things, but um they they just don't I think that people just don't know that the same God that can give you things can also be present in the midst of storms and he might also let you rock through the storm. Like you sit and you think about Jesus on the boat with the disciples. Jesus was asleep on the boat. The, the boat started rocking and the disciples were scared. Jesus seemed irritated that they woke him out of his sleep and asked them like, oh, ye of little faith. Like, why are you calling on me? You didn't think I would pull through. I don't think you said all that. It's probably just, oh, ye of little faith. But the bottom line is like people be knowing God or excuse me, people be believing in God, but they don't know God. And so if you I think in order for people to see the good in a bad situation, to expect the goodness from God, you have to know him. You just have to know him because I don't think there's any way that you can know God the way I know God and be sitting there like God's not going to pull through. I have never in my life thought that God wasn't going to pull through. I was questioning the time. God will have you sitting for a while, but he's always pulled through and I always believe that he will pull through. So um, I, I think for me, it's so much easier for me to to... It's so much easier for me to get through hard times because I know that this isn't the end for me. It can't be the end. I serve a God that loves me so much. Why would he leave me in despair? All right, y'all. I feel like I've said all these segments are like my favorite or these really good segments. I don't know. We're getting into word association. I think this is actually my favorite segment. So Benicia is behind the camera. She has a list of words, phrases, questions, whatever. She is going to run down the list of words, phrases, or questions. And I'm just going to say what comes to my mind as she says those words, phrases, questions, whatever. All right, Benicia, take it away. Uh, shows or movies that are worth watching? I watched this movie recently called The Blackening. And it's like, it was essentially about a bunch of friends that are black and they stay the night at some house and they find an old game, like an old board game called The Blackening. And <laughs> it asked them a bunch of like black ass questions like, what's the theme song they're living in color? And if you don't know the answer, one of the people dies. And that was a pretty good movie. Oh, shit. Yeah. It was actually in theaters, apparently. I don't know why there was no, like, marketing or promo for it. I, I watched it on a bootleg site. But um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good movie. Y'all watch it. The Blackening. I ain't too much into, like, TV other than Jocelyn's Cabaret. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Next. All right. Something you learned about yourself this year. Mm, something I learned about myself this year. I don't like drinking. I don't like going out. I don't like clubbing. Like I'm the friend that wants to do activities. And I guess I always knew that I was like an activity person. I didn't realize that I wasn't really too into like the turn up or I guess lately I'm not into the turn up. So I'd be feeling bad because my friends, whenever we get to talking about hanging out, I don't want to do anything they want to do. And I'm pretty sure they don't want to do anything I want to do. So I feel like we kind of like compromise in that regard. But what I learned about myself was I don't like the things that I liked last year or the year before. I'm just maturing. Really, that's what it is. I've learned that I'm, I'm maturing, not because not drinking makes me mature, but because I'm stepping into who I am. And, you know, I'm honoring that and respecting that and 
you know, it's just sticking to who I am. So th that's just that. So what are three random icks that you have? Three random icks that I have. Three random icks that I have. I do not like when like, I get this a lot. Like people will go through my Instagram and like they'll like every picture, but they won't like the ones with my girlfriend in it. And then they DM me. It's like, come on. Like you made a deliberate decision to ignore the pictures with my girlfriend. And then you DM me. Like, what do you think is going to happen? I think you could have used your brain a little bit more on that one. Um, what's another one for me? An ick. Hmm. What is another ick? I'm trying to think. Ick. It's like, I want to say this, but I feel like this is like basic. Everybody's ick. Like, I really don't like like anything that stinks. Like stink breath, stink body, stink anything. Like if it stink, I'm liable to not like a person because they stink. Like I be hearing people say they make passes. Like if you go on a date and somebody stink, you might go see them again. You won't see me again. I don't like I just don't like stinky stuff. B, if you went on a date with somebody and they smell bad the first time, but the vibe was good, would you reconnect? No, because that's a clear indication of the fact that you don't care about yourself and you need to go heal. Because you on Boom. a date, you're supposed to be impressing me. Why the hell do you smell like shit? Per, you know what's so crazy? This is my last ick. I will see a lot of people get on the internet like bashing their partner, their ex, whatever, and they say things like, this bitch don't take showers. This nigga don't do it. I'm like, I'm so troubled by the fact that you were staying in a relationship with them, given the fact that they don't take showers, given the fact that they stink, or given the fact that they dirty or whatever you went to go air them out about. I'm so, 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 so confused as to how you feel comfortable letting us know about this as if you are exempt from the equation. Thank you. Like, girl, if you was fucking with somebody and they stink, you probably stink. At least you got a tolerance for stink, and now I'm weary of you. So that pretty much concludes today's episode. I hope y'all loved it. I enjoyed it. Y'all already know what to do. Follow me everywhere at Black Mocha, V L A C K M Zero C H A. Um, that is my personal Instagram account. Follow me on there, and then subscribe to my personal YouTube channel, which is Black Mocha as well. And if you aren't already doing so, follow the show, y'all, at Constance Anna Show on Instagram, at Constance Anna Show on TikTok, the Constance Anna Show on YouTube. Y'all better subscribe. Leave me a comment. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please, please, please leave today's episode a review. Leave me a review. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And once again, do not forget that Cry About It, Write About It is a free write journal that I did create. It does have Bible verses in it. It has prayers for those who don't know how to pray. This is really your opportunity to get to know you, to get to know God, but also a way for you to release whatever is going on inside of you. All right. This journal will be dropping soon, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Click the link in the description box below so that you can be notified when this journal drops. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you next time.